earn a letter in this sport. So this is a way for them to do that. Because so, so they will earn a Fairville High School letter for participating in the clay shooting. As I understood it, that was one of the goals and one of the reasons why they wanted the district to give it their blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but based upon our previous conversations, my understanding is that for, for yeah. kids from the community to participate in this league, they need the school district's approval. Is that correct? That the league, that is the clay correct. shooting league, does that in is, fact require yes. our approval. That, that is correct. So. And our school has already endorsed this program by yeah. allowing some of our students to participate uh, in cooperation with BA. So we've had Faribault Middle School students already shooting within this league. I understand all the safety precautions that are in place, and I appreciate, Peter, your, your response to that, that, you know, that uh, students do have to have gun safety lessons Correct. and uh, carry a certificate actually showing that they've gone through the, the training programs. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess my, my hope focus of the question is, is the recent issue with guns um, and, you know, <coughs> Connecticut issues and guns being on any school district property. Yes. But uh, thank you for the clarification that the chances of that happening are minimal, if even not happening. Correct. Uh, correct. Where there'd be no reason for students to have any kind of a shotgun on campus. That's correct. At the high school. Okay, thank you. You know, and I'll just add towards safety. I think it's important to mention that all students who participate have to uh, complete the safety class that you talked about. Um, but I was also impressed that at every single practice, every um, uh, meeting of this group, uh, there needs to be a safety instructor present. Um, so there's an adult uh, certified safety instructor. For there, there needs to be a range safety officer range safety at officer. Every, every shooting event, and, and that range safety officer needs to be on the range while students are shooting. So there's never a time where students are shooting as a part of this organization, yeah, unsupervised by a by a trained safety officer. And that's Absolutely. And, and the ratio of a trained safety officer to students is what? The the coach's ratio is ten to one, and the range shooting officer will only be um, having five students at a time actually shooting. So the 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 way the the uh, clay target uh, setup is is um, approached, you have five shooters facing one house that's delivering the clay targets and one person shoots at a time while the rest of the shooters guns are empty shooters only put one shell in for their one shot and then they must wait their turn and the range safety officer is right there with the group and um, yesterday at the gun club we actually had some of Waterville's uh, potential shooters there as well so we worked with some of their shooters and at that point, we had one adult behind every single shooter, and I envision that's something that we will do definitely with all of our Faribault shooters as well, just for early training, uh, the experience uh, that they're gaining from this uh, the first time through, it's much better if an adult is right there with them as well. Mr. Chair, just one more question, and I promise to shut up. Um, <laughs> they're good questions. <laughs> Can I use that phrase if you don't? <laughs> <laughs> Only tonight. Um, for certain, there is absolutely no cost to the school district. There's no cost to the district. This so. is purely funded by the shooters themselves and the coaches are volunteering. All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate and that. <coughs> other questions or comments? I'd like to make a comment in that uh, I appreciate Mr. Robichaud's questions and I re appreciate the responses. I'd like the community to be aware that we have uh, had some extensive conversations with Mr. Jacobson and other representatives of the Clay Shooting Organization and uh, they have addressed at every instance our concerns about safety and, and so on. So uh, I feel very comfortable in endorsing this activity for some of the reasons that were brought up earlier in our meeting. It is a way for this district to uh, build connections with students, even though we are, as a district, not contributing financially to it. Uh, it it bears our, our name in, in, a, in a sense, and uh, we have staff members involved with it, and it is another way of building connections with our students. And uh, unfortunately, we seem to be on the verge of losing some of those uh, connections, um, but this is one that we're building one, and I appreciate that effort. Thank you very much, Peter, for your responses to the questions I had today and tonight. So. Right. Any further questions or comments on this item? Uh, 
Hearing none, I do think we have a motion and a second. That's my memory. Uh, so we'll have a motion and second. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, next uh, is the approval of the 2013 uh, 2014 integration plan and, and budget. Um, who is uh, presenting that to us tonight? We can tag team. Okay. Uh, this is a proposal. We use this program to uh, pay for various pieces of our AVID program. Some of our uh, EL instructors, our CAST program, our FAST program. This is a, a grant that we use in collaboration with Waterville Legion Morristown to help out with uh, education, diversity education. Um, so it, it does a a lot of different things with the grant. You can see the dollar amount is, I don't have in front of me, I think it's $535,000. It's, uh, it's a grant that's up in the air and in the legislative session this year. However, we do need to get the grant moving and approved. So um, if something does occur, hopefully before June 30th, then we can react to it. But uh, I'll let you guys ask questions of Colleen if you want to talk about the predictability of the funding coming in and, and what all that means. But it's been a very valuable um, source of revenue for us with, with our diversity population. I would make a motion that we approve the integration budget as presented. We have a motion to approve. Uh, is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, any further discussion on this item? What are the chances of the state? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a loaded question, but. I'll do it if, anyway. if I were a betting person, I would put my money on that something will come of this because there was an integration task force, if you remember, or maybe you don't, that was put together last summer and into the fall, and that was at the request of the legislature. So they didn't really necessarily want to just do away with this completely, but they did want to have a look at it and see if it needed some tweaking or revamping. So I, I'm betting something will come. It will probably change the way integration revenue looks and how it's used. Probably won't be the same. Um, we may not get the same dollar amount. We may get more, we may get less, we may get the same. But the Department of Education has asked that we proceed as if it will happen. So that's why you see the budget now, even though the funding isn't there yet. Will this turn into an unfunded mandate? No. No, if, you don't, if we don't get the money, then we don't have to do any of what's in here. Well, I would say we won't turn it into a funding, unfunded mandate. No, you know, speak the only, the right, the only um, catch is that we are funding some English language learner positions with some of this grant money, so that would be a question that we'd have to come to you and, and see if you wanted to continue some of those, but that's not a high dollar amount. But we would lose the AVID program, which I, as I understand, it's just been wonderful for our kids. I'd like to ask a question. It, <clears throat> I have been um, interested and, and, and pleased with uh, the information I've gotten mm -hmm. about a number of the programs here. You mentioned mm -hmm. AVID specifically, CAST, FAST. Mm -hmm. yeah. Am I getting all the acronyms <laughs> correct? Yep. Um, for purposes of educating the community and, again, myself, I'd like to, this integration situation was the result of demographics correct. in with our district in comparison to some of our surrounding districts, correct? correct? Yes. And so as a result of that, uh, we were given this grant in order to address some of those issues and the programming mentioned were our means of addressing that. Correct. Those, those uh, racial and cultural differences between yes. districts. Yeah, every year the state does a demographic look and they look at your district and the surrounding districts that border you and if you have a diverse population and somebody around you doesn't and there's a ratio that they use, then you are considered to be an integration district and they require you, they don't ask you, they require you to work with that district that doesn't have as much <coughs> diversity and you work together to increase the opportunities for both districts to commingle and interact. That state requirement is addressed by the funding of this grant. We are not Right. Uh, using general ed or general fund dollars no. in order to address that obvious situation, that obvious need, I guess. Uh, I'll go so far as to say it's a need in my opinion, but yes. um, this is the, we were required to pursue Program. programming mm -hmm. and the grant is funding that program. 
Yes, and okay. the district that we cooperate with also gets funding. Understood. So we don't pay for that district to participate. We each participate on our own, but do activities together, okay. some activities together. Well, thank you for confirming what I understood, and, and I did want to bring it up now yes. as a means of, of getting that out in the public. But if the law, if it goes nowhere, if this just completely does go away because it does sunset at the end of this year, and if they don't come up with something for next year and going forward, then we would stop with these expenditures, with the exception we'd have to talk about the EL staff. Mm -hmm. With the we'd have to talk about the English language staff that okay. are being funded by this. All right. Just to follow up to what uh, Mr. Casper is asking, <coughs> is that this is not a matching fund grant either. I mean, this uh, dollar for dollar comes from the state of Minnesota. Yes, part of it's state Minnesota. aid and part of it's yeah. local yeah. levy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that with the demographics that are happening across the state, this is not just an urban suburban issue. It's, as you know, across the state that uh, it's very unlikely the legislature will take away integration dollars. However, as Colleen indicated, there might be a different uh, dynamic as to how you spend the money. Mm -hmm. But uh, given uh, the fact that uh, we have a large increase of uh, students of color across the state of Minnesota, that uh, the legislature would be very short-sighted if they didn't right. continue funding integration. And I believe the task force and the Commissioner of Education would like to see it geared more towards student achievement, yes. especially for students of color. And so that would be our hope, is that this grant money would be more geared toward outcomes of that That's nature. Correct. Yeah. And just one other comment, that fits really well within the vision that we talked about. Um, we talked about closing the achievement gap in one of our statements, and the AVID program is a prime example of doing that. So. Um, so my, my, uh, my sense is we need to approve this at this point because the state right. is requiring us to right. send them approval for a budget. My, my guess is that at some future point we'll have to reapprove a new budget when we have uh, new monies from the I'm state. I'm guessing we probably will because it probably won't be this dollar right. amount. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a very good chance that at some future date, yeah. since, uh, since uh, yeah. we're now approving a budget for money that the state has not yet to decided they are going to give us, um, but they are requiring us to figure out how we would spend the money that they have not decided how to give us. Right. Yes. Um, well put. You heard that right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we, we may, may very well uh, see this in, in the future. However, it is good planning. It's good discussion and good conversation. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, any other comments or questions on this item? Uh, I think we do have a, a motion and a second. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Thank you all. Uh, next up, uh, approve of the, the 0.5 FTE special services uh, contract with Northfield. Uh, so we have uh, approved uh, for our administrators to sit down and have a negotiation with North, Northfield and uh, bring that back to us. And so now uh, this uh, uh, agreement can move back to us. I think Northfield sees the exact same uh, uh, agreement and we'll also have to approve this agreement for, for this to move forward. So um, I'll entertain a motion in a second and then if there's any discussion we can go from there. Is there a motion for approval of the 0.5 FTE special services district contract with Northfield? So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, all right. Any discussion on this item? Certainly have talked about this a few times as a board. So. Not hearing any discussion, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, call for a vote. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, next up, uh, approve the adult basic education addendum to lease. Uh, Anne Marie is going to come forward here. And, uh, explain what this is about to us. Yes, I think last time, you? Oh, excuse me. Uh, last time I was up here uh, at the last board meeting, I talked a little bit about how South Central College has come to adult basic education at Town Square to ask if they could have a shared space for nursing, for a nursing lab. Uh, they would fully equip it in terms of everything that goes along with becoming a nursing assistant wheelchairs, stethoscopes, all of those good things. And uh, we would pick up the rent. And fortunately, we've had 
We belong to a, a consortium of other ABE programs in Southeast Minnesota, and uh, with their combined funds, they will be giving us uh, a big portion of what the rent would cost for that, for that additional lease space. So that's what this is before you. Uh, it was not able to go through the Finance Committee as planned. Uh, the last committee meeting was canceled and this needs to move forward as we're hoping to get things moving as of March this year. Um, Anne Marie, so this will come out of the community ed budget, is that correct? Uh, yes, just a small portion of it. Uh, the rest will be picked up by the Southeast ABE Consortium. Sure. And just to clarify for anybody watching, uh, the community ed budget is, is a budget that uh, uh, funds many good things in our district. Um, but uh, as we're talking about many cuts, I want to be clear that uh, it's not a budget that can be touched to address those those items. Um, and so uh, um, this is really a separate discussion from those items. Um, any uh, questions or comments on, on this? I'll make a motion to approve the adult basic education agenda. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion uh, and a second to approve the adult basic education addendum to lease. Any further discussion? Just to make a comment, I just want to thank Anne Marie for doing this. This is a great opportunity for our adult students at our um, in our adult basic ed program to get a CNA certificate and uh, get some work in our local community. So it's a nice little program, and thank you, Anne Marie, for getting this going. Thank you very much. It Pat Weasler and Brian, Pat Weasler, who the staff is for, for Adult Basic Ed, and Brian Knutson of <coughs> South Central really um, helped bring this together. So I thank them as well. Uh, it, it, healthcare is the largest, fastest growing sector in Minnesota. So there, there are ample jobs for, for those to fill. So thanks. You know, in light of our some of the discussion earlier about career programming, I, I think it, although this is not tied to our, our K-12 program, or pre-K, 12 program. K-12, because pre-K is actually community yet, <laughs> so it is K-12. Thank you. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but I think having this opportunity locally uh, certainly offers an opportunity for our local people, uh, adults of all ages, to take advantage of, a, of an area where there is uh, job growth. So yeah. I think it's a great thing. And a, and a career path. And again, I offered some kudos earlier. This is just another example of some of the great things coming out of uh, community ed right now and the partnerships we're forming. It's, it's fantastic to see. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. And aye. Opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda, item 10F, the ad hoc committee report. So Todd, if you want to start that off for us. Yeah, it's just a report to, um, thank you. My computer keeps on shutting off. The, uh, the ad hoc committee met on February 5th and a group of citizens that uh, were willing to come in and, and take a, just another set of eyes to take a look at the cuts that were enacted at the uh, September meeting and look at possible scenarios to programs that could possibly be brought back if the budget works itself through this spring and, and we're able to add some programs back next fall. So uh, again, it's just a set of eyes. These are suggestions and ideas. I would say that the committee's work is not quite finished and as Ms. Davids had mentioned before, it'd be nice for us to meet again so we can go through this and take a look at it. Um, it was a two-hour meeting, and so you have to kind of take that into perspective, too. We talked a little bit about what we wanted to bring back, comprehensive programming, things like that, and we had to stick with that, that particular list of cuts that were made. So if you look at the highlighted uh, section on Roman numeral five there, these are suggestions on how they viewed it, and these were some of the programs that bubbled to the top. All the programs basically were ranked number one that were on that cut list. So I. It was really hard to give a specific number for which one was the highest priority versus the lowest priority. So if you look at the seven programs that they um, are looking at as priorities to make it a comprehensive program, given limited funding, that would be sort of a combination of what they had. I will say that in all the 
the discussions orchestra really bubbled to the top on, on every discussion that we talked about. Um, these other programs, though, they, there are the large class sizes in the high school and the, in the middle school, which are going to be approaching 40 to, in some cases, higher than that in the core groups, they also felt that needed to be addressed in, the, in those core areas. So that's the outcome of that first meeting, and I guess I'm looking to see if, if the board would be okay if we were able to schedule another meeting to visit for another couple of hours, because I know there are other folks that have called me and, and have shown interest in coming and taking a look at it too, and I think the more eyes we have on it, the better. Um, Todd, do you need an action item to approve a meeting of this item? Right. This no, is just discussion, just in, I guess, um, if there's anything that the board is opposed to or would like me to address through the ad hoc, I'd be more than willing to, to look at it. I would, sorry, I would just like to say quickly um, that uh, certainly I'm in favor of another meeting of the ad hoc committee, um, and, I, and I think uh, um, you, know, you should feel free to call me, you know, if, there need, if that needs to be two board, two ad hoc committee meetings before our next meeting, I'll mm -hmm. let you use your discretion on that. Okay. Um, I don't think we should be feel limited to always have a discussion at the board meeting about whether We've approved the ad hoc committee in principle, and I think I'd, I'd be happy to allow you to use your discretion to have them meet as often as feels um, necessary to do the job. Is that a place where people could discuss ideas that they have about saving specific programs or how they would act? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the, the program, the motion that was made for me to, the direction I had was to take a look at that list of items of $1.6, $1 $1.7 million worth of items, mm -hmm. and then come up with some ideas of what programs that this committee believes are priorities. If, if we get $50,000 after we net out the budget and, and what the state possibly could give us, what would we add back if we had $50,000 to, to spend? Or if we're able to use some of the compensatory or any kind of those shifting dollars. We probably won't be able to make a decision until May because um, Colleen has to work on the budget for next year and the projections to see what those dollar amounts are going to be if we can in fact add any programs. But that's the main purpose of it. It's another <coughs> set of eyes. What I'm saying is, do you think it would be too much to have that as an agenda item at the ad hoc committee for people to bring citizens that have a plan, for example, or things they want to present <coughs> to save specific programs? Is that too much? I don't think so. I think that as long as it stays within that list of reductions and that we had, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. And I would be interested if people can present it back, what they have, what their ideas are. I'd much so rather have them present than me talk right. all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, that would be great. So, but specific, as you said, to the cuts that were made. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So if the auto uh, mechanics uh, right. people would like to come or if there's individuals, I know Jennifer is going to talk about that at the next meeting. and. Um, others with the orchestra, they, they talked about that. The physical education program um, was talked about, as you know, 30 minutes a day for Phi Ed. Mm -hmm. Does a great job for boosting academics, uh, sometimes more so than higher class sizes. Mm -hmm. So all those different components were talked about at that last meeting. So yeah, we invite anybody and like I said, the more input we get from the community, the better. Yeah, thank you. Notify Kathy Matichek at the district office if you want to be on that committee, and then she will get you on that list. Thanks, Kathy. Right. Any other questions or comments about that ad hoc committee and your, your work to date? We'll send a note out then to those that are interested um, of the date that we'll meet. It'll be an evening. We haven't set a date yet. Hopefully with plenty of advance so that we can yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully avoid that in the future. Um, any other questions or comments? Just a comment, I, you know, and I, expanding the committee is a wonderful idea, but I don't want it to come across as diminishing the significant impact that you've had or input you've had already from some very dedicated individuals who have given hours and hours and hours of their personal time <coughs> to this district uh, and to uh, work on that, but it would be uh, beneficial to expand that to include uh, some other uh, stakeholders who may have some very significant input as well. Thanks. 
I'd like to make two comments. Um, I, I was at the ad hoc committee meeting, and I do appreciate the, the thoughts and the ideas of all those who participated and, and hope that we can get those people back and even more. I think um, the one regret that I had at the time was that we were only looking back at cuts that were made last September, not necessarily looking back on changes, reductions, and cuts that have been made over the last at least 10 years uh, where we have struggled uh, due to a you know, flat, basically flat funding from the state. And so it is my, uh, as my stated hope, as I, as I stated at the work session, that once we uh, address this most you know, current budgeting cycle and, and, and deal with whatever we can, problems we can solve, there will be problems or shortages or, or uh, lack of programming in some areas that have been made in the past that we haven't even looked back at bringing back. And so I'd be looking forward to something like an ad hoc two committee to help us make uh, uh, decisions uh, in future. Hopefully we may not be under quite as severe a budgeting limitations as we are now, but uh, that's yet to be seen. Uh, but regardless, uh, I think um, that I think, well, I would like to have a wider vision, a wider input, and in looking at what we need to create and sustain a first-class educational programming for the students of Faribault and uh, what that's going to require. And the more input and more interest we have from the public, uh, the better. The, the professional guidance that uh, Mr. Sesker and his team have given is invaluable. Uh, the input from our teaching staff, our administrative staff, and parents, I think, are all crucial if we're going to be able to sustain a uh, highest quality programming possible. Mr. Chair, I don't, yes, please. Um, Mr. Rosh, I'm going to go back to Mr. Olson's original uh, motion earlier, and we deferred that to later on in the agenda. Mm -hmm. Is this the time where we can discuss it? Now would be it? a great time to discuss it, absolutely. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Number one, to pick up on what Mr. Olson was uh, suggesting early on about auto mechanics and orchestra. And then uh, also uh, Mr. Casper's question about timing. And uh, the question is, may going to be ample time for students to register for auto mechanics, should that be an option? Um, to, uh, to follow up on that, I understand it may be an option for our high school with May, but should the unfortunate circumstance come where auto mechanics is not available, does that give students enough time to enroll in post-secondary? Um, because I know there's a timeline there as well, and they have to meet some criteria. Uh, and also, uh, as they are in the, the um, process right now of registering, are students informed about that option at the high school? But more importantly, even though we look at May as, as an option for us or enough time for us, is it really enough time for students to exercise a post-secondary option if that circumstance should ever come forward? Hopefully it won't, but if it does, I don't think we want our students sitting out there the May, May 15th and going to Dakota County and Dakota County saying, sorry, you're too late to register for post-secondary options. Yeah, and that same, that's a very, very good point. The same piece would be um, how do we how long do we keep the kids hanging on? And then do they hang on, hang on, hang on, and then find out, oh, too late? When do we make a decision definitely whether we're <coughs> going to have it or going to have it? So that's a great point. That's why I brought it up. Right, you're that's why I brought it up. Because all the emails and whatever, and on the list here, orchestra was really high, and I was at that meeting. And then with the uh, automotive program, I think it's almost double enrollment from nine now there's maybe 20 there's 30. 30 it's it's going up as we speak well I think you have to be very careful about that too um, there's 30 that have shown interest but that's happened every year and last year I think we had 12 
So we'd have to really be sure what the registration numbers are. And I think that'll be part of the discussion too as we go forward with it. And the other thing about the orchestra program is, you know, we have a, a, a teacher who's highly regarded. Um, and what's the, the timeline? Certainly he's got his own personal issues that he has to face as far as his own future. But I think we owe him um, some uh, courtesy to say, you know, we want to make a decision as soon as possible as well. So That's why post-secondary is not so much an issue at the orchestra, although students can certainly participate in St. Olaf. I think you have, yeah, you accept post-secondary students. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, I say, yeah, they, not for some schools, though, I don't think. But <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for something to hit. Yeah. <laughs> except but I mean, there are students yeah. well, uh, Except everybody in Mankato, so. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think we also owe it to those students as well, as well as our, our teachers highly regarded to, you know, do this as expeditiously as possible. And I think everybody knows the, the whole politics around this, too. The, the greatest fear is that next year's levy is, is if there is going to be a levy, it's going to be pretty important to get through. And I think the, the message somehow, if this is a, the thought that the board is going towards, is that we have to figure out a way that wouldn't jeopardize that, that risk of losing the voters who are the auto mechanic backers and the orchestra backers and some of those others that'll say, see, they figured out how to do it. I don't need to vote on a levy next fall, if that's what it comes down to. I think that's the biggest fear for those folks that worked so darn hard on this levy this last go around is to not jeopardize that, that political piece. And, I, and you guys are very well aware of that. Richard, how do you feel about having um, a discuss at the next work session with the staff present to address like the specific questions that were brought up about post-secondary and the cost and versus what students would leave, that sort of thing? Well, again, I, a, I, I don't want to lose qualified staff like Jerry and, and the right. students. I mean. We're going to let the staff go, and then the students. We're going to lose students. They've well, already said that. Well, I, I guess I would feel if I'm going to make a vote, I would yeah. suggest that I would want some information during a work session presented to me specifically. If that's what you're interested in, is the orchestra and the auto. Well, that's that seems to be the highly emotional issues. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, middle school sports, tennis, and those other ones, you're going to open the door a little bit. So, and if. Those are going to be hot topics too, and I can I can see the tennis team coming in and saying, it only costs us ten thousand dollars to run tennis. We're going to have two kids leave, my two kids leave. That's going to cost you twelve thousand dollars. You're going to net a negative two thousand dollars. We talked about that before the cuts were made, and that's the argument you're going to get for some of those other programs too. So you, you just have to be careful when you open that door. And again, you know this. I don't have to tell this to you um, that you could open the door for a lot of other things to happen. Too. But you know what the automotive. I mean. I realize that, but you're going to but still again, lose. You know, you're still going to lose. Could be thirty mechanics. Do you want to lose two thousand dollars if you cut tennis? What sense does it make financially to to go negative two thousand dollars? I think um, all of this is an argument for why, uh, from my point of view, we want to make these these decisions in a holistic way, and not in a piecemeal way, because um, uh, I can guarantee there are. are Many parents who feel very strongly about orchestra, we saw many tonight about automotive. They are absolutely right uh, in all the things they say about the importance of those programs. Um, there are other parents who feel the exact same way about the class sizes in the elementary. There are other parents who feel exactly the same way about um, tennis. There are parents who feel exactly the same way about transportation. And uh, all, all I would argue is that I want to make that decision uh, after looking at all of those and not um, uh, not one at a time without looking at the big picture. That's, that's all I would argue. Mr. Chair, and I totally agree with you 100%. When you take a look at it holistically, however, I want that picture to talk about the options available for particular programs <clears throat> as opposed to no options available for other programs. Absolutely. And I'll just throw out, for example, middle school activities. <clears throat> there are options that can be looked at that would allow kids to still participate. Um, there really is limited options for other, and class size is obviously one of those things that has no option, uh, Mr. Chair, so I totally agree with you. But when they discuss the decision making is what options are there available as opposed to no options at all.
And I think timeline is a very important question. Um, for, for not just for options for when we can add things back, but I think for students and for staff as well. I, I think that is, uh, uh, I agree completely that that is a, an important question for us to think about as we move forward. Um, and, you know, we're sort of mixing agenda items here as we get to district-wide budget discussion. One of those are the things I want to talk about is sort of timeline, and I might as well mention that now. Um, Todd and I had a discussion sort of about timeline, and I think the month of May was thrown out, but I think um, uh, likely every meeting we have between now and May will um, have discussions on these items. Uh, uh, we had just mentioned earlier today, I was talking to Todd about the, the agenda and other items, and, and uh, um, very soon we'll sh we should uh, um, have some preliminary budget items coming forward for us to start making some decisions. Um, uh, and so uh, uh, I think uh, uh, pushing that forward as much as possible is, is absolutely on the agenda. Yes? Yes, a as a board member, I, then I also looked at our fund balance, which is about 14%, mm -hmm. and we have a policy of 8%. So it's like, okay, it's a rainy day fund. Well, guys, it's rainy. Mm -hmm. And and it's um, orchestra is high. And um, automotive, the potential you know, mechanics, we need mechanics. I mean, they can go out and get jobs right away. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, with, with the, uh, the communication from our stakeholders and then when I look at our fund balance, it's, you know, spending this money. I know other groups will say, well, I just spend it, but these are the groups that are coming forward. These are the groups that are here, the orchestra people, uh, the automotive people, they're well, the ones that are coming forward. Yeah, and I would just point out that it, this current year we're spending a good portion of that fund balance, so that will not be the fund balance going into next year. Um, so that is something that we need to consider. Um, uh, and, and I don't disagree entirely, um, but I think that also needs to be part of a long range plan and not just a short range plan too, so. Um, Remember also yeah. you took a few dollars out of the OPEP piece too? So that also has to eventually get reimbursed. So that's those are areas that you have to be aware of too. And and when the financial piece comes up in April, Clean's going to fill that in for you, so you can kind of fill in the blanks. There are a lot of a lot of parts to this whole puzzle that we have to really really Since take. Brought, I mean, also that I think the board has asked for unfunded mandates that we could approach our state senators and state reps. I mean, what kind of impact does unfunded mandates have on the district? At Thirty. Three million dollars. That's three million dollars that we have to take out of the yeah. out of the general fund. Yeah, and that's hard. Yes. And it goes higher every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And until the federal government and the state decide to fix that, it's it's going to be up. Yeah, that's why I brought up with the integration. All of a sudden, yeah, you're going to do it, but we're not going to give you any money for it. You know, that's 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 my fear. Yeah. The integration yeah. grant is a grant, so that money's there, yeah. but it's it that's that's not a mandate that be a grant. What the, state, what the yeah. state's going to do to us, who knows? Oh, yeah. I'm just talking about right. the ones that were already mandated. Yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah. The other ones. But the, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, as a, oh, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, it is something we should bring up at the Finance Committee, too, Richard. Since we want to, you're suggesting spending money, you know, it would be a good place to start with the Finance Committee. Well, there's committee. a lot of stuff. In fact, the legislative day is March. I'd have to go back and look. I have it pretty Second, twenty fifth, something where you know we could all go up and try to influence our politicians. <coughs> yep, that's the purpose of it. Yeah, <coughs> I want to go. Yeah, uh, I was going to take the PSEO deadline is May thirtieth. I found out, so just so you're aware of that, to register for PSEO is May thirtieth. And I'd like <coughs> the uh, you know we speak of the ad hoc committee as being sets of eyes on this process. I'd also like, my view is that the curriculum committee is a set of eyes on this. And that uh, <clears throat> I too, as Mr. Olson has indicated, have you know received a lot of feedback about different programs. But uh, I too, as Mr. Enbrick has said, would like to see us address this in a, in a holistic way. Um, I'm interested in, in creating the highest quality, sustainable educational program that we, can, that we have. Um, I respect the, the, the suggestions made thus far by the ad hoc committee, but at the same time, I would like to have <clears throat> additional meetings, additional discussion, and 
from the curriculum committee as well at uh, what would create a, the best balance of comprehensive programming that we have the money to support. And uh, if, if May does give our students and our staff, <coughs> uh, I'm, I'm wondering about some staff, but the, the sooner we can do this, the better, obviously. But uh, I'd like to look at this holistically and get these other groups as their eyes on it as well. And that's, you know, I'm not, I didn't vote for your motion, Mr. Olson, not because I don't support orchestra and automotives, I do, but I also support class size, I also support all the other things that, that middle school activities and all the other things that we are put in the position of having to eliminate in order to try and balance our budget with perhaps, as Mr. Sesker indicates, maybe additional cuts depending on how things sort out. So I'd like to move as with all deliberate speed, but make sure that it's deliberate. I agree with the holistic approach as well, but I was not on the board when the cuts were made, and, mm -hmm. and I would like specific attention to the auto program, so I'm just wondering if we can review it as a work session, perhaps with some of the ideas that were brought up by the ad hoc committee, and also you're working on the um, option with college and the future of that program. Yeah, that's not, we just found out that that won't happen this year. Exactly. So that's at least a year away. They need at least a year to, to look at that and try to see if they have it. So that, that option has already been explored and that's not going to work this Well, year. I'd like to see the yep. year away to me as a piece of sure. looking at this. Yep. I, I do, we just found out. <coughs> so, yeah. away. So I would ask that we discuss that as a work session coming up. I would certainly be in favor of that. I've been given information about what might be called a snowball effect in that uh, eliminating the upper end of our automotives program eliminates tools and, and uh, supplies and cars to work on that are only available because we are, I believe, if I have the initials right, NATEF certified. Yep, that's right. And if we don't uh, offer that level of programming, then those tools and cars and and other things may disappear, thus limiting even lower level uh, programming. So, um, and I became aware recently that of what Mr. Sesker just mentioned is that it's going to take, we're not going to get a collaborative with South Central in the time frame to make it happen for next fall. They're indications that I've been given is that there might be something possible to work out over a longer period of time, but that's to be decided and it's going to simply take longer time than we have to, to make that decision before um, it needs to be made. So that's a longer range issue. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I assume we can continue this line of discussion. Um, sure. You know, as, uh, whether it's the ad hoc committee or the work session, however we approach this, I'm going to assume that our building leadership took a lot of time to analyze, and the district leadership, the consequences of this program, of those cuts, um, rather than just saying, you know, okay, we'll cut this program and let the chips fall where they may. In addition to that, I'm going to assume that they had looked at some options that would be available. And if they haven't, I think they should, uh, regarding the auto mechanics, uh, post-secondary, whatever it is, orchestra. Uh, was there discussion about offering orchestra through community education? Uh, was there discussion about offering uh, uh, co-curricular activities through parks and recs or community education at the middle school? So I'm going to ask that the administration as well our district leadership look at some of the options available in a holistic approach uh, to share with the ad hoc committee, the finance committee, uh, whoever else needs to be made aware of that. That it wasn't just coming up with a list of cuts. Here are the consequences. We know class size went up, but what are some other options that were looked at? And I would think that uh, if you go through that list, they certainly would have done that uh, analysis and looking at options. Just figuring out how to frame the work session agenda item for that because it kind of all it's all encompassing with the between the holistic message, the 
the justification for the cuts and then also the more specifically the auto mechanics program. Um, if you're okay putting on that, then maybe Jace and I can just visit and try to figure out how to put that as an agenda item for the work session, unless you have any other suggestions on how we can write that. I, I've talked to you about this with the budget before, and, and the, uh, I would say I piggyback on, on Jerry's that on the district-wide budget discussion, I think the board, uh, and it could take special meetings, whatever, should look at the budget line by line. Take the time. I don't care how much, you know, at least personally, I'll speak for myself, of course. Take special meetings to we look at it line by line. And, you know, were the cuts made that, you know, could other cuts be made that really stay stays away from the kids? But I, I'm, I really want to, you know, look at the budget in complete detail, line by line. <laughs> Well, I, I, I encourage that, and I think Todd and I have already talked about this, but I want to be clear, it's, it's when you say line by line, um, that's 4,000 lines. Um, line by line, one per minute, you can do that. That is a, something like a, a, a 60 hours worth of, of meetings. Um, so, um, I, with all I would respect, do that, I, I would think, do that. I think there needs to be some practicality involved in that, but I think we're trying to look at a way to make sure that that at least is available to, to everyone. Yeah, did you want to go to the board retreat discussion before we hit that? or? Yeah, let's do the board retreat discussion. We have more budget discussion stuff to come forward, and so, so we'll do that. Um, let's skip one. Um, so for the board retreat discussion, this perhaps is, is rather short um, uh, and largely an update here. Um, uh, the board looked at a, a, at a couple of items uh, in particular, uh, we've re-examined the, the strategic uh, plan for the district. We do this on an annual basis. Um, uh, this gets posted on the, the district website. Um, so last year's uh, uh, is, is posted. Um, and so uh, um, we looked at it again this year and I've, I've made some uh, uh, small changes to it. I think uh, as, a, as a board, we generally found it to be uh, um, in line with the thinking of this board. Um, uh, and most of the, the changes uh, to it were, were simply refinements of what were there. Um, uh, as a board, uh, we asked Todd to try and implement some of the things we discussed into that. So this is in front of you uh, now to look at uh, uh, for any discussion or thoughts that you, you might have. Yeah, you also have some paper, but it is in the, the board packet as of this morning. Um, uh, I think we'll probably take an action on this next month. Yep, give you, this will give you a chance to review it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's here for our review, uh, for us to look over, um, uh, see what our thoughts are, um, if there's any uh, discussion items that we'd, we'd like to, to bring up at this time over the course of the next month until the next meeting, uh, <coughs> feel free to do so. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Vision 5 still has a duplication <laughs> on, strategy, on strategies. Utilize the communication opportunity. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I gotta find it. Revised as a problem. There we go. Thank you. That one doubles up. What does that cross out? I, don't do, I didn't find any spelling errors this time. That was good. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the uh, other items that we looked at um, were uh, um, expectations for the superintendents and some things that uh, uh, we've asked him to think about going forward in the next uh, year and year and a half uh, for us to review and so those items were, were placed down. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, these will be posted on the, the website by themselves but certainly people could find them among the uh, board agenda if they wanted to, to look for those to see uh, the sorts of things we are asking uh, for from our superintendent. Questions or comments on any of those things from that meeting? Todd, you are comfortable with with those goals you've set for yourself? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. And maybe this is just bringing us back to the discussion we were having, and that was a short segue. Um, but <laughs> the next item on the agenda is uh, uh, 10H, a district-wide budget discussion. I'm going to turn that over to Todd to have him sort of get started on the things he wanted to make sure we talked about. And, yeah, as Mr. Olson had, had pointed out, I think the, the board, I think it's a good idea for the board to take a look at the budget. It's just determined on how you want to look at it. 
And for each individual, it might be different. Some may not want to look at all the details. Some may want to look at all the detail and ask questions about it. Um, I'm just looking for some feedback. Basically, there are three divisions of the general fund budget. It's the district-wide budget, the elementary budget, and the secondary budget. So those three portions are the ones that you want to review. Uh, community ed budget is separate. You're certainly welcome to that. Food service is separate, and so is debt service. You're certainly welcome to that. But I think you're more concerned about the general fund budget right now, and that's one that's about over 4,000 lines long. So looking to open this up to see what sort of feedback you can give me and some sort of direction that you would like to give me to help accommodate everyone so they can understand what's going on with the budget. Mr. Chair, I yes. just have a, a comment to that uh, fact. Uh, you know, we're, we're structured in a committee makeup. We've empowered the Finance Committee to take a look at the finances. Mr. Olson, you serve on the committee, and Ms. Davis, you serve on the committee. Also, we have our experts. We also have a broad stakeholder representation. Um, I'm very comfortable with the Finance Committee looking at globally at the, at the budget. Um, and certainly, I trust that the report that they give back to us and the reports we're getting from Colleen on a regular basis um, is going to provide and make my comfort level at a point where I will entrust that those individuals that are reporting back are, are doing their diligence in looking at the budget uh, rather than having all seven of us get together 4,000 nights throughout between now and the end of the month. I, I appreciate where you're coming well, from. That's, yeah, but really yeah, that's what I'm trying to say is that this is critical, the whole budget. That yeah. Instead of a committee, it just... I know I'm on the finance, but I'm just saying, Jerry, I want you there. Um, and I have the option. Jason, I want you there type of thing. Yeah. The input of this is, to me, I think is really critical. And, and we do have the option to attend those. You yes, know, you do. Uh, at yes, that do. point. But it is a broader representation than just the board looking at that finance of the district. And again, trusting um, Colleen and, and her expertise in that whole area and Todd as a superintendent. Um, if, if we're not going to, if we're not empowering the finance committee to do that, then why do we have a finance committee? Is my thought yeah. in, in response to your, your suggestion. <clears throat> and, and what I was going to suggest, uh, um, you know, this, this budget is there, uh, the, the items are there, this is information Colleen has and can, can make available to us at any time. Um, I, I was going to suggest as a starting point that she simply make that available to, to all the board members. There's, there's no harm in that. Um, the board can look that over uh, at, uh, uh, at any level. Um, you know, personally, I would say every single year I, I read our audit. Um, we have auditors who come in and, and uh, look very carefully at it, and I read the audit line by line, and, and uh, um, uh, I'm happy to look over the budget, um, but uh, um, I think line by line uh, goes into a realm of micromanagement that uh, is specifically not within the board's purview. But I would be happy to make that available to any board member. And should there be any concerns, uh, discussions that any board member wants to, to have and bring to the board, I'd be happy to bring that to, uh, to discussion of the board. Is uh, how I would suggest that, that we handle that review of, of the budget. But the finance could review it in more detail. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And then, of course, um, anybody's welcome to to join the committee. We just have to know so we don't open meeting law violations. It's a little tricky if four of us show up at the meeting. I would and there's already don't have, three yeah, people yeah, on. I would just have three. Well, unless that other people want to join at a critical time, and then we would, I would just publicize say that, that saying there's going to be more than three people. You'd have to post or, it. Oh, it's or a posted meeting. Meeting. Post post it. Yep. Post it on our yep. yeah. Just right. post it. You're absolutely right. It's a, yeah. it's a post so meeting. In, you can in have, case you can there's have other board, board members, members that want to join mm -hmm. the finance committee and sit at the table and say, hey. Yeah. You have to post it as a public meeting three if you days. have more than three, yeah, within whatever the time frame is. Two, two hours. Yeah. If, you, if there's going to be, we have to, we have to know ahead of time if there's going to yeah. be more than three board yeah. members that are going there. Yes. Because otherwise, I would recommend not having the meeting because you're going to set up yourself for yeah, a final yeah, exactly. meeting. Well. Mm -hmm. So if they want to join us in finance, let you know. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. okay. So if we set up a time frame that we all receive the budget again, 
review and then the finance committee meets and if board members have specific concerns <coughs> online, bring them to that committee. Would that be a yeah, process? Or show, or show up yourself. Or show up yourself if you have specific yeah. questions. Yeah, that's, that's all. Mm -hmm. okay. That's it. Does that work? Todd, is a plan for how you want to? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out systematically sense. how that's going to work. I'm not. Um, make, yeah, yeah, let's get the expert up here. Yeah, <laughs> if you have specific questions, I don't think the finance committee is the appropriate place to bring it because most of the people on that committee are not intimately aware of the budget either because they're not a micromanaging unit and they, that's not their intent. I, I guess if you want to see it line by line, I can certainly send you a PDF. It will be very big. And it will be in codes that you won't be familiar with, so I'll have to send you the information so that you can understand what the codes mean. Um, and I can do that. And if you have questions then about a specific line item, I would prefer that you ask me because it will be a waste of the Finance Committee's time to ask it there. I'm but a the master copy of the school district during this time frame that we're going over the budget. Something like that might make more sense. I, just just to put this in perspective, I took two semesters in college to deal with budgets and UFARs and systems like this. So if you think you're going to get this in one day, you're not going to get it in one day. All right? And cleans, she, that's what she does for a living, is a budget. We can give you the budget with the whole items, and I agree with clean. I think you should, actually, I think you should go through me and ask me, then I can do the research for you. But do it like in chunks. So if you have 20 questions, give me 20 questions so I can research what those are. If you're asking what PERA is, or you OASDI, or if you're asking me what the rate of TRA is, we can answer those questions pretty quickly and send them back. If you're at asking what is code 01005020000000 or 360, um, we can certainly answer those pretty quickly too. Those are questions we can do back and forth by email. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're looking at mainly the substance within each of those budgets to determine I guess what waste we're having, or well, like what? there's certain like the food service we don't have nothing to do with that. Right, this be just general. Fund. so the ones that we really have no control over, right? There are many codes even within the general fund that you don't have any control over because they're mandated. They're okay, and there are they're funded by specific funding sources that again you don't have any control over. You either spend the money or you don't. If you don't spend it, you don't get it. So, I mean, there are all those kind of intricacies <laughs> and things that, as Todd indicated, I, I could spend a week with you prepping you to understand this and you still wouldn't probably understand it line by line by line by line. I would just like to say <clears throat> control is not the word we're looking for. We have no flexibility within that. Right. We control the whole budget, yeah. all 40 some million dollars as a board, as elected officials, but within that, there's very limited flexibility right. in the community services and food services and debt services. Um, there's no latitude for us to move around any of those dollars. Even in the general fund, you know, <clears throat> all of the compensatory, the basic skills, the learning and development, right. all the set-asides, you don't have any flexibility in how you, not I shouldn't say any, but very little flexibility in how you spend that. You can't spend it on orchestra or NATEF or middle school activities. So if you're going to, it's going to be difficult for you to look at that. Even if you do understand the codes, you're going to think, well, how come I can't use this money for that program? Well, it's because it has to be earmarked for this particular expense. And if you don't spend it there, you can't spend it anywhere else. Correct so, me if I'm wrong, Richard, you were looking at this as an opportunity to build for a future level of housing, as we discussed it. You I, want to I, the I want to go through and make sure that I'm comfortable where the money's going. That's, that's what I'm doing. And I'll speak for myself. If it takes hours and hours, uh, I'll, I'll put the time into it. But again, I want to understand now, if there's certain things we can't control, put that aside. Over here, we can't, that's mandated. Now, if it's unfunded my mandate, that's Todd's problem. Yeah, or, that would be, yeah. We, that's those something we would to be tell able to us. Yep. The, the, can we change that? No. You know, well, <laughs> you hopefully. Can't. It, well, legislative, we really yeah, might be able to. You know, and, and if I'm only going to give you the things that we do have some choice over, it will be significantly less than 4,000 lines because I'll right. ignore special ed completely. You don't have any choice on that. That will take out a significant number of lines. I'll ignore all the set-asides. You're going to get down to very a limited number, but, you know, then you're talking about... Well, you know, I'd like to at least take a stab at it. 
and identify. I can send you a PDF of the codes, and, and then I can, can report look at back it. to the board that it was a great big headache. <laughs> Well, I, and, and so, you know, back to see if my, my proposal seems appropriate to start by sending that to the board so we all at least have a sense of what that would entail. And, and uh, um, uh, again, I think my suggestion is to, to start with us as a board looking at it as individuals and should we have concerns to bring those uh, starting, I think, with Todd. And, and uh, um, if uh, uh, questions become uneasy answer then to, to answer, then they can come to the, to the board to, to look at in more detail. Um, but I think that's the... The way to proceed, and I think Chair, I would just amend that. If there's any communication from any board member to Todd or to Colleen, that all board members get that question. Yeah. Yeah. So please, when there's questions, to share it with the board. So <coughs> um, yeah, and I think uh, Colleen can probably generate that 